wanted to I wanted to fire some some sort of questions at you. Not questions, but headings that I would like you to sort of give advice on for the youth. Mm. Because as yeah. I said, this a lot of what I'm doing, a lot of what you're doing is about trying mm. to help the next generation. So hundred percent. What would your what would your advice be to anybody that's trying and suffering rejection? What would the advice be? Um, my advice is, do you know what? It's just like football. It's just like um, when you shoot, when you shoot on goal, you don't always score. Yeah. But if you decide to not shoot anymore, then you hundred percent not going to score. Yeah. So no matter how many times you miss, just keep shooting. One of them's going to go in. Okay, percentage. The more yeah. you shoot, so when you get a rejection, okay, take time. Let it sink in or recover from it, but you have to go again. You know what I mean? When one door closes, another door opens. Okay? So my um, advice for suffering from rejection is just never stop. Do not ever give up. Do not ever give up because every player at some point has had a um, a rejection and you're no different. It's just how you bounce back. That's the difference. Brilliant. Love that. And what about um, training? What advice would you give mm-hmm. to the youth up and coming training wise? Um, training, as in what type of training to do or just? Not necessarily um, what time, but what, what should they, how do they prepare for trials and, 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 and stuff like that? Um, obviously, I would say just work, work on your height. Like, Work on your physicality, not to be stronger, but work on your, how can I put it? Like, work on your fitness. Fitness is very, yeah. very important in, in yeah. football, you know. And if you're not fit, you can't, you can't perform any of the tricks that you yeah, do, yeah. or any of the what you want to do. Because just imagine doing something when you're tired. It's really, really hard. So yeah, focus yeah, a lot on your fitness. It's very, I think it's one of the most um, important thing. And like, the other important thing is, is your, is when you're away from football, the things you do away from football, like don't spend your time doing unnecessary stuff. Sacrifice, I mean, just set yourself, like give yourself, set yourself targets and give yourself time to, to reach those, those targets. Yeah. And within that time where you're working towards your dream, Sacrifice, sacrificing two years of your life to to have 10, 12, 10, 15, to even 20 years of a career is nothing. So for yeah, that two yeah. years where you want, or three years you want to make it, cut out, cut out if you go partying, cut it out. If you eat junk food, cut it out. If you, like whatever thing you're doing that is negative and not, uh, and not um, shining a positive light in what you want to, what you want to do, um, as a footballer, then don't do it. You understand? Just sacrifice. Take pride in your what, what you're doing, and sacrifice for the two years. That's what. That's what I would say. Wicked. And you mentioned earlier about, about the professional and having and working on the mental strength. Is that yeah. what? What would you say about how maybe the the youngsters can go about trying to feed themselves with the right? messages and and, and. Um, I think what, um, what you're trying to say is how not to feel that they're not good enough or yeah, not yeah. to feel the, like the mental side of the game the mental all, all I can say to, to that is guys you're like football is a simple game you're more than you're more than um, good enough to to play football Obviously, if you want to make it, then you've got some sort of ability um, to play football. But the real difference is like mental, your mentality. It's like how you, how you deal with rejection, how you deal with how you carry yourself. Like football will always take care of itself. Do the things around football right, and football would um would take care would take care of itself all the time. The people at the at the top, like I said, the difference between them and and some of the players, trust me, I've come across players that were literally so good, I just could not understand why they haven't made it. And mm. then when you talk to them, when you see their persona, 
I mean, when I was at North Fun- um, in Carlisle, we had players. I don't want. I don't want to be stereotypical or anything, but yeah. we had players come from London to come yeah. have trials over there, and the culture there is a little bit different. There, some of the players that came on trial came in. They were walking with their hands inside their their shorts and stuff like that, and yeah. and their body language was not. Yeah, was not great. I mean, you can't. Even, for example, even that's what you're like for the trial, just fake it. Just try and try and be, I'm not saying change your personality or whatever, but try and be. So give a good sub- impression, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Give a good impression of, um, of yourself. And when you do make it pro and everyone's singing your name and you want to do whatever you, then then you can do it. But impression, like I said, first impression um is, is very important and just, just yeah first impression very important just look after yourself and be, be ready that's what i'll say and what about the surroundings so the people that you surround yourself with i'm guessing that's very important isn't it because i know you had yeah, some yeah. some good people around you that you grew up with that really helped you through the game 100 percent. like the whole old saying goes um if you hang around with five idiots, you're going to be the what? The sixth idiot. <laughs> if you hang around with, <laughs> if yeah. you hang around with five people that want to make it as a professional, guess what? You're going to be the sixth person that's going to make it. So surround yourself with like-minded people, yeah. you know, because some friends, I'm not saying, oh, some friends, are they're not bad, you understand? But a lot of them don't want you to that surpass them or um, do better than them so yeah which is not which is not i would never say someone's a bad friend for that because every life everyone everyone wants to do outdo them the other everyone's achieve more and when a certain friends feel like you're leaving them behind they won't unnecessarily look up for your best interests like for example if you've got a trial the next day um so you want to go to bed but they're calling you up you'll come let's go here or let's do this let's do that you have to be able to be strong enough to say, you know what, no, I need to rest up. I need to, that's why I say it's better, like your friends will be there. I had to do yeah. that. I cut out a lot of my, like I said, I sacrificed for the three, four years. I cut out a lot of my friends that I was doing, that I was doing unnecessary stuff with that wasn't helping in where it was fun. I wasn't yeah. helping in where um, I want to get. So I had to make a decision. I cut out. A lot of my friends, because I know they're still here. When I make it, they'll st- they'll still be here, and they'll yeah. they'll be more than like, happy to say that like, yeah, he was my friend. I grew up with him. Do you know what I mean? And he's made. I'm, they'll be even more proud of you once yeah. you make it. So sacrifice, just sacrifice for a bit. Hang around with like-minded people, like I did. I was hanging around with um, my friend, very good friend, Alvin Murray. Yeah, I I can honestly say I probably owe my career to him because. If I wasn't hanging around with him, he would not told me about the Northampton trial. He told yeah, okay. me that there there's a trial, open trial with Northampton. I'm going, come, let's go and see what happened. He told me, and I got in, and he didn't. Yeah. And you know, that's why I, if I didn't hang around with him, I might not have been, I've been, yeah. there, I've been there. So big yeah, up to Alvin. Just, yeah, big up to Alvin. I've always um, and I always. Um, kept my word I told him after the trial I told him like if I, anyhow I sign professional in Northampton I'm going to bring you in and I kept yeah. my word played a few games got myself out there got myself like um, in a good position where I had a voice at the club yeah. so I said to them like, listen I need to have a look at my friend he's a really really good player bring him in just have a look at him please so I brought him in he had a, I think a few days a week trial or something like that yeah unfortunately it didn't work out for him but i yeah. you d- you did I your, kept, you, you yeah. tried man yeah i kept my word and and 100 percent. yeah so it's very really? it's very important to hang around with the right people i would say important message there people important um so just before we wrap up derek man you know you scored against liverpool at the cop end right i, I need to know how that felt you played against manchester united as well 
to to yeah. to me, man. Scoring against Liverpool in the cup end, how, how's that feel? How's that feel? Do you know, like if you watch any of my videos on, on my YouTube channel, you know that yeah. like, I was the biggest, I was the biggest um, Liverpool fan. <laughs> Liverpool is just my team. Like when I first came over from England, from sorry from Ghana, um, the red of Liverpool, John Barnes, Peter Beardsley, um, Ian Rush, all them, all them great players. They were like my idol. John Barnes was like my idol. And yeah. he played for Liverpool. So I was the biggest Liverpool fanatic ever. Yeah. And when we when we got the draw that like, we're gonna be playing Liverpool, I was like, oh my god, this this is this is unreal. I'm actually gonna play at Anfield. I've never I'm a big Liverpool fan, I've never been to Anfield in my life. Yeah. Which yeah. I'm so ashamed to say. No, the first time I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna be actually on that playing. pitch, playing on that, <laughs> playing on that pitch against these, these these crazy players. And I was just I couldn't believe it. And when I actually scored scored that goal, it was just it was it was mad. <laughs> it was yeah, mad. That, that everyone must be a was feeling. Just, everyone was just silent. The cop and I uh, scored in front of the cop and everyone was just like because Liverpool I think Liverpool was going through a bit of a transition because I think Brandon Rogers was under a bit of pressure. Okay. And me scoring against them added to because we actually <laughs> did the game. We didn't lose, we only lost on penalty. So oh. the whole stadium was just like it was just quiet, it was just silent and obviously my fans were just going hysterical, going crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what about what was it like to play against Manchester United? Yeah, it was it was it was fun, it was amazing. I couldn't like I played I also played against in Chelsea as well. My yeah. night was like un- unbelievable because um you had Ronaldo was playing yeah. and Paul scores. I yeah. I was like I was obsessed with Paul Scores. I, I thought he was one of the best players in the world. And yeah. it was just it was amazing to play with them on the same pitch. What was he like on the pitch? Was he, he was, up I, to expectation? He lived, he lived up to more than expectation. The guy, you can't get close to him. This is what I mean. Like, <clears throat> Obviously, he's gifted, but his yeah. brain, his head is so yeah. fast. Before, you know, like snooker player. I don't know, snooker yeah. players. They have like yeah, three yeah. or four shots. Shots ahead, heads. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's like him. He had like three or four passes ahead. So as soon as he got the ball, you can't get near him. You can't yeah, get near yeah. him. How did he touch the here? Moves it. Uh, it was insane. But I did get him. I done <laughs> my trick on him. <laughs> I, I made him kick the air. I made him kick. I tried to who is this big two player? Let me take the ball from my bench. He was too quick for him. I was too quick for him. I was too quick for him. Yeah, so he, he fouled me a couple of times. But that was that was, that was cool. Yeah, wicked, yeah. wicked man. If we was to just say what what's the last bit you've given us so much um, mm. insight, so much like advice and and direction on how the youth can take it. What what's the one bit of advice that you probably would hang your hat on that you would tell your son that's now trying to make it? Um. My son will tell you this always is like never try to prove anyone anyone right. Um sorry, never try to prove anyone wrong. Always try yeah. to prove yourself right. Okay. Because a lot of the time <clears throat> people always go out like trying to prove that or like when I got all the all the disappointments I've had, I could have easily went, oh, I'm gonna prove you right. I mean, there's there's yeah. no need for it. Yeah. Have self confidence and prove to everyone that you were right. That's what I had yeah. because no one believed in me. Yeah. I didn't care what they felt about me. It was all about me. I knew I was going to make it, and it's all about proving it to myself. So yeah, as yeah. long as you know you you can make it, go out there and prove it to yourself. Work hard. Hard work always pays. Like I say, work hard. Yeah, prove yeah. yourself right for believing in yourself. That's what yeah, I say. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic.